Hey, Trey, you, you look at your career with the Eagles, uh, 2014 to 17. Of course, you go out on the, the ultimate high note. But how do, you, how do you look back at your days when you were here? I had a blast, man. I was really, really fortunate. Um, like, man, really fortunate to have Selleck and uh, James Casey and Ertz um, and Justin Peel as my tight end coach. Like, I couldn't have asked for a better scenario, a better situation to walk into. Um, I, I really enjoyed my time with Foles, you know, the year or two that he was there in Philly when I was there. And um, just the whole process, you know, of becoming a, a professional and learning the, the professional game and how much different it is in college. And um, I, I, I had so much fun. And like I said, I was just really fortunate to have guys that were unbelievable leaders and men to kind of help me and, you know, put their arm around my shoulder and teach me the way. All right, welcome back in, everybody. Hour number three, we are Sports Take. I am Rob Ellis, along with Derek Gunn, Barrett Brooks, and joining us now, can't wait. Can't wait to talk to our next guest, of course. And, and Trey, I've been saying hey, this, I've been Trey, saying Trey. this all along, man. We, uh, hello, hi. What up, guys? Hi. <laughs> yeah, we got you. Cool. Yeah, so we I was going to let you finish. My bad. Sorry about that. No, no, was, I was just messing around. We have a, an interesting camera shot up right now. Um, so, uh, you know, I was saying earlier, you are part, and I don't know, you know, if you, if you hear it, you probably hear it every single day, but you're part of arguably the most iconic play in the history of Philadelphia sports in, in the Philly special. Mm-hmm. How many times have you watched it since the Super Bowl? Give me an estimate. I, I haven't watched the game yet. Um, what? Wow. Yeah. You, never wa- you haven't watched that game? No, because, I mean, the day after I was gone and I was, I was out of Philly and went to Chicago. Yeah. Um, with uh, to be with Nagy, so I, I've never watched the game. I mean, I, I'm sure I will um, eventually a lot, but um, no, I, I haven't watched it much at all. Hey Trey, since you left, have you have you come back to Philadelphia in off season? Not off season. I went to the uh, the Bucks game last year in uh, in Philly. Um, okay, I probably I've probably been back you know four or five times. Okay, so do people still come up to you and want to talk about that play? Yeah, 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 yeah. For sure, definitely. So what are you doing now, man? Uh, I live down in Tampa, uh, oh, Florida. You? Yeah, I'm about to head to my daughter's, daughter's gymnastics and just picked up my son from basketball. So just being Ain't a full time like dad, it, man. man. Yeah, been yeah, en- yeah. Like been it, enjoying man. it. Can't complain. No That's question. great, man. So Trey, any any designs? We know I uh, didn't play last year. Any designs to come back and and still play in the NFL? Is that still in the equation, or have you have you moved on? I haven't moved on like fully, but now that the COVID stuff has has gotten over with, you know, for the most part in the league. Yeah. Um, I might, we'll see, you know, it has to make a lot of sense. And so um, you never know. I, I'm not, I'm not shutting the door, but uh, I'm, I, most, both my feet are almost out for sure. Bro, so, bro, bro, just play as long as you can, man. I had to retire <laughs> because of an injury. If I yeah. hadn't got injured, I'd be in year 50 and I'd still be trying to play, bro. <laughs> I believe it. I believe it. You know how it is. So, I mean, it's tough to, tough to give up on it. I'm by no yeah. means, I'm still working out and I'm, I'm not giving up on it, but if it, it makes sense, I, I'll, I'll still play for sure. Definitely. So the so the further away you get from playing and become more of a full time dad, how how much is how much does that make the transition easier for you because you get to watch your little ones grow up more so than you would have if you were playing? Listen, man, I love I think I enjoy watching my kids play more than playing myself yeah. Uh, yeah. and just you know being there for them and just the lessons the life lessons they learn in sports are just so special. You know, it's kind of hard to teach them those things and. Um, it's just been a lot of fun and it makes it a lot harder to want to go back and to do training camp and to do OTAs and, you know, put my yep. body through all that stuff. And so, uh, you know, I'm just taking it a day at a time. Honestly, I'm not rushing to any decision and, um, but I am enjoying my time with my family and my kids. I'll tell you that. So are you one of these dads? Are you one of these real boisterous dads in the stands who embarrass your kids uh-huh. or, or one of you dads, you like, you just sit here and like, <laughs> I'm not going to say a word. We'll discuss it when we get home. Yeah, Which I'm not gonna say doing? a word. I'm, I'm not gonna say a word because if I say a word, then I'm like too heavily involved, and I don't want to fight any other parents out there. So like, <laughs> I don't want to do. I don't. Wanna, I don't want to deal with all that. So like, I'm gonna be honest with you. Like, I'm just gonna chill, and I'm gonna enjoy it. And then when we get to the house, we can talk it over, and we can walk it through, and go through the whole scenario. But <laughs> no, I'm not screaming and none of that. Like, because if I did, yeah. I'd just be, you know, I'd be too much, and I, I'd yes. to fight somebody. So. Oh my goodness. Well, you know what? Um. You know, just watching your career, man, and being able to, you know, sit down and break down film and everything. Bro, you were more of a Swiss Army knife than a conventional tight end. You know what I'm saying? You yeah. Know, I would equate you more like an H-back, you know. So, you know, when did you make that transition to being that guy? You know, was it with Philly yeah. or, or what? 
No, it was in college. Uh, I was a freshman, and uh, there was only two two quarterbacks on scholarship, a guy named John Brantley um, and then myself. John was a senior. He sat behind Tebow through Tebow's, Tebow's whole career. Um, really good quarterback. I think, he, I think he was number one in the country coming out of high school. And I'm sitting in – we're in training camp. I'm sitting in the, the QB meeting, and uh, we're like probably like towards the end of training camp. And I remember Urban late night, you know, 10, 30, 11 o'clock, bust through the, the door – and he's, he, like, basically said, like, this is, like, word for word, like, you're too athletic to not play um, for our football team. We need you to do something else than just play quarterback and sit the bench. And you know how it is. Like, I'm a freshman. I want to play. I don't want to sit. I don't want a red shirt, none of that stuff. And so from then on, I, w- I went to, you know, tight end meetings in the morning. I went to running back meetings in the afternoon and wide receiver meetings at night. And mm-hmm. wow. uh, kind of just learned it from that that point on. And so I, I, I knew, I mean – looking, you know, trying to look into the future. I was, I didn't have the arm strength to play quarterback and, you know, that type of stuff. But um, so I knew it was probably the best fit for myself. And that that's kind of where it took off. Yeah. And, and Trey, you, you look at your career with the Eagles, uh, 2014 to 17, of course you go out on the, the ultimate high note, but how do you, how do you look back at your days when you were here? I had a blast, man. I was really, really fortunate. Um, like, man, really fortunate to have Selleck and uh, James Casey and Ertz, um, and Justin Peel as my tight end coach, like I couldn't have asked for a better scenario, a better situation to walk into. Um, I, I really enjoyed my time with Foles, you know, the year or two that he was there in Philly when I was there. And um, just the whole process, you know, of becoming a, a professional and learning the, the professional game and how much different it is in college. And um, I, I, I had so much fun. And like I said, I was just really fortunate to have guys that were unbelievable leaders and men to kind of help me and, you know, put their arm around my shoulder and teach me the way. So, so how much did it bother you, if any, that you you helped this franchise win its first ever Super Bowl, and then all of a sudden you're gone after that? You didn't get a chance to come back and and and, and bond with those guys again a year after you won that thing. Yeah, it's not ideal to to do it that way, but man, we had so much fun doing it when we were doing yeah. it, and so um, you know, I, I kind of like to live in the moment and like enjoy mm-hmm. the time that I have, you know, while while I'm there, and so it was really hard, you know with that last year in Philly, just because of the contract situations and all the bull crap that you have to go through, you know, with yeah. that and becoming a free agent and everything. Um, it was really hard for me to really enjoy that time. But like, those, those are some of my best friends in the world still to this day. And I, I knew that and I wanted to make sure I enjoyed that time. So it definitely wasn't the best way to do it. And I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't want to do it that way again, if, if it happened that way, but um, you know, you got to make the most out of it. Yeah. The word. So, I mean, is there any chance you want to be a coach or anything? You know what I'm saying? No. You just step away. <laughs> he said no. <laughs> nope. That didn't nope. take long. <laughs> no shot. No shot at all. <laughs> Why not? Why not? I just I, I can't I can't deal with the kids these days, man. There's not they lack a lot of this, a lot of a lot of respect, you know, for older people and coaches. Bingo. And, Bingo. Um, they're just they're so quick to say something back, you know, and everybody has has to have the last word and. Kind of like the the parenting fighting thing. Like I'm, yeah. I'm good, man. I'll just stay out. And if they want to, if some kid wants help, you know, there's been kids, you know, along the way um, while I've been playing, and even now, like uh, my I live like 45 minutes to an hour from my high school, um, one of the best high school football programs in the state. Mm-hmm. Listen, bro, they already know if they want to, if they if they want some help, they want some encouragement, they want some, you know, lessons, some thoughts. Like, give me a call, and I'll come down and help. But for everybody else, I'm good. You know, Trey, Trey, when, when do you, you think know, that changed? Like when, when, when you're not an old guy by any stretch, but exactly. when, when do things change where there's less respect than maybe there was back in your days in college or early days in the pros or whatever? I think a lot of it has to do with uh, the parenting. I think a lot of it has to do with like the strict rules now where like, you can't, you can't make like a kid, you can't make a kid cry now. Like they used to be able to back in the day. Like mm-hmm. I remember when we, when we used to condition in football, like it didn't matter if you were hurt if you weren't hurt, like we used to have a thing in college called the pit and like, you didn't want to go to the pit. No, there was no, you couldn't be soft in college or else they would just send you on a bus to a different school, different university, you know, like nowadays they can't really do those types of things. They can't really yeah. be as hard on you. I mean, I remember in college, uh, I mean, the weight coach is not, and I don't, I don't think this is a good idea, but he's throwing weights at people because they're talking back to him. I'm like, what? <laughs> like, shoot, I ain't, I ain't saying nothing to this guy, you know, like just like <laughs> right, the, right, just right. The coaching was, the coaching was so much tougher, you know, back right. in the day. Um, when I was playing. And so um, I think we've obviously gone far, far away from all of those, those types of things. And, you know, for the better, a lot of, t- a lot, a lot of times in a lot of ways, but um, there still is that big lock, lock uh, loss of respect for sure. It has a lot to do with um, how you coach these kids, how they accept it, because everything is just right there for them. Yeah. Social media, um, 
instant gratification. Everything's right there. And, you know, if you if you do or say anything out of the ordinary or I mean, they just posted right then and there. It's too much posting, man. I mean, yeah. half the stuff that happened to me in the NFL from 95 to 07. If it was a camera phone or anything else around, bro, yeah. that would be nobody be in the NFL. Half the NFL been gone. That's what I'm gone. saying. Yeah. And I mean, the, you you can transfer at any time now, at no right. matter what that, level, that high too, school, yeah. you know, at college, yeah. like all that stuff. Like, there's, there's no, you don't have to sit and wait your turn. You don't have to develop. You know, you want to play right now and you're not good yeah. enough to play right now. So you're going to go somewhere else, you know? If you think about it, it, it could have maybe completely changed your career. If you were one of those guys who was hell bent on being a quarterback and felt disrespected by Urban, you yeah. could have transferred out, maybe never even made it to the pros as a tight end H back. You right. know, I, so mean, it's, I, it's, I almost le- I almost left uh, Florida my sophomore year because I had a uh, Charlie Weiss with my offensive coordinator. Urban left. Urban left. Uh, I think Urban went to Ohio State at the time. Will Muschamp came in, um, defensive guy, one of my one of my favorite coaches, like phenomenal coach. Uh, one of the best defense coaches in college. And then he brought in Charlie Weiss with him. And I didn't get along with Charlie at all. I couldn't stand him. And if Charlie would have stayed for my junior year, then I probably would have left and went somewhere else. Um, but since he left, I stayed. What do, you, what do you think about the way Urban Meyer embarrassingly bowed himself out of the NFL after a brief stint? Yeah, I, I don't know much about the details. Obviously, the headlines and stuff aren't very good at all. Um, yeah. And I hate that all of those things happen. I have a great relationship with him and his – whole family, his daughters and his son. And so, um, I mean, I, I have, I, I have no ill will towards him. I, I've seen, mm-hmm. you know, some of the stuff that's been said and I hate it, but um, that I was with him a long time ago. So uh, maybe things have changed, you know. Mm. Trey, let, let me swing it back to the, to the Philly special. You may not have watched the game, but I'm assuming you've seen the play a couple times. Uh, yeah. What, what, how, cause there's varying reports about this. When did you guys start practicing that? Was it something you did the whole year? Did it come up late? Did it come up week of Super Bowl, like or two weeks, whatever it is, building up? Like when did that start? And and talk about the execution of it because you guys nailed it and you could have done it. Better. Yeah, I, I think I believe uh, it came up during the bye week for the play in the playoffs. The first we had a first round bye, and uh, I think the story was that Doug told uh, all the coaches to you know find the trick play that they you know like or that they've ran in the past and. Uh, Press Taylor found one. I don't remember who who ran it, but they showed it a couple of times. It was it was like a college team or something like that. And so we uh, installed uh, probably like three or four of them, you know, at, at the time. And um, the Philly special is probably the best one out of all of them. But we carried, you know, a couple of them throughout the weeks in the playoffs. And uh, I thought, like, typically I knew I knew when he was going to call it. I had an idea. You know, you're inside the three or four yard line, obviously on, on the goal line. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, second or third down, you know, for sure, because then you could obviously kick a field goal and that type of stuff. So going into the Atlanta game, um, there was a couple times where, you know, I'm ready to roll. I think that we're going to call it, doesn't call it. Going into the Minnesota game, you know, we, we get up so hot, uh, so much on them, you know, mid mid part of the game, obviously towards the end of the game, that I, I figured, oh, we're probably not going to call it this game. But in the Super Bowl, I wasn't even thinking about it. Like, I, I've been so alert <laughs> and so like, oh, dude, we're about to do it, we're about to do it, we're about to do it. And Super Bowl comes around, you kind of just lose your mind a little bit. And uh, definitely never would have thought we would have ran it on fourth down, you know, in the Super Bowl like that. But, uh, yeah, we practiced it a bunch, you know, a couple times a week. You know, we I remember going in the week of the Super Bowl. So the two you have two weeks to prepare for the Super Bowl. The first week we're at home, you know, in Philadelphia doing it, practicing all that type of stuff. Second week we're uh, in Minnesota. And with all the stuff going on with the Patriots recording everything and, uh, you know, all the all the stuff that you hear about that, we never ran it live. We would only do it in the meeting room where we knew in the hotel, we knew for sure that there wasn't anything being filmed oh, and nothing wow. was going on, you know, behind the scenes. And so, and, and we did that probably with a couple of plays as well. It wasn't just the Philly special. Um, but uh, yeah, so then obviously when he called it in the game, it worked out perfectly, you know, uh, great snap, uh, great catch, great pitch, great throw and uh, great catch. So yeah. It's good. Were, were you surprised that uh, Doug gave that play the green light at the point of the game he did? Well, see, you don't you don't realize that Nick came over and said it, you know, like, yeah, I, I have no clue because they're, they're off, you know, a little bit down, down the field and on the field as well. And so I, the only thing I really remember, like, if I think about it, like, I remember my coach, uh, Justin Peel, obviously has a headset on. He has one ear out, one ear on, and he he's not speaking like he has yet to click a button in order to speak, but he's yeah. like talking and he's you know, going through stuff through his head. And uh, it's all about personnel, you know, when you mm-hmm. first uh, when you first call play. So you want to make sure you have the right personnel in the game, you know, to call the certain play. And so he, like, looks at him and he says, I think you're going to go in. And and, I, and not, like, in a weird way or like, just normally, like, right. I think you're in. Like, because I'm standing next to him every single play. Like, what's the deal? Who's in? Who's out? 
He's like, I think you're going to go in. I think you're going to go in. And, like, he, like, makes a look at me. And he's like, go. And then I run in there, and then, boom, they call the play. Mm. Well, I, it's sometimes it's like in basketball when you're too wide open, you'll miss the shot because you're thinking about <laughs> yeah. it too much. Nick, <laughs> Nick was pretty open, Trey. I mean, was that <laughs> like did that screw you up? And any obviously not, you nailed it. But was did that go through your mind? Like I can't believe how open he is. See, I don't think I had enough. Like like you said, they're wide open and they think about it too much. I don't, didn't have enough time to think about it. I, I remember, I think we like for some reason we broke the huddle late, even though we were coming out of a timeout. Like the play clock was already running. And uh, I remember Nick called the play, and one of the guys was like, "What's that?" Like he he didn't know what, what he, didn't know. he must not, <laughs> he must not have been in in practice or something like that or whatever. And he's oh. like, "What's that?" And then like we were all like a couple of us were like over here, and then you know we, he gets lined up, and then the ball snapped. So it wasn't like I was sitting in my sta- in my wide receiver stance, you know, for twenty seconds, like, "Oh shoot, you know, I got to do this." It was more of like I had some we had to get some dude lined up, and then boom, the play is called, and you know that's really it. Hey, Trey, oh, Trey, what, did it, what did it mean to you to be a part of Philadelphia Eagles history in terms of delivering something to this 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 fan base, this organization that they so desperately had wanted and got tired of hearing about the Eagles were the only team in the NFC East that had not won a Super Bowl? Yeah, man, it's so special. Like the city obviously deserved it um, through all the heartbreak that they've had over the you know previous years and um just being the only franchise to not win and, you know, those type of things like shoot. It just meant, it means so much to them. And it was so cool going back and like seeing it and being a part of it. And uh, they definitely deserve it. I'll never forget. Like, I think obviously winning the Super Bowl and the after party and all those things are awesome, but man, that parade, I don't think I'll ever forget that. Like it was just nonstop. And there, I remember they were saying something like, it's going to be like, you know, three hours and shoot it ended up being like eight hours. (laughs) I'm like, dude, (laughs) I loved every you know second of it, and you you just see so many people and the joy that the people that that were brought to the people of Philly, and they just so, they're just so deserving. It was it was a lot of fun, bro. I was uh, I, you know, I covered it, and I was down at um at the museum. So while you guys are on your way, I was freezing to death. <laughs> yeah, right yeah. there in front of it, man. So I'm sitting there freezing to death. I'm like, where are these guys at? And I remember back when I played uh, when I when I won the Super Bowl Steelers, it might have been the coldest day I've ever experienced. But being on that yeah. bus, I don't remember being that cold, but I knew after it was over with, I was hauling ass back to my car trying to get him out of there, man. But, but during that time, man, just having off everybody just, you know, I mean, it was crazy, yeah. man. That's that's a crazy feeling to have, bro. We I didn't do it like you guys, though. Yeah, really? you guys did it. You guys did it right, man. Because you got I me, mean, you guys were all, you guys were all in character, man. That's, I mean, that's the best thing about your team. You had a bunch of uh-huh. characters on your team, man. No question about that, man. I, I don't even remember it being that cold. You know, now <laughs> that I think about it, yeah, I had, a, I had a beanie on my head, but yeah, it was probably freezing. I remember it was it was thirty five degrees. The sun was out, but it, that wind that wind was it was a beast, man. And I was stationed right below the steps, the art museum steps, where all you guys were speaking at the podium and stuff, and we're looking, listening to all the speeches, and then all of a sudden. This guy named Jason Kelsey steps to the podium <laughs> and just drops the mic like a rapper at a concert. Yeah. And I've and I've asked so many of your former teammates this, so I have to ask you, as 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 Jason is giving the speech of a decade, what are you thinking when you're listening to the words coming out of his mouth? I mean, I think we all understand like Jason is Philly. Like yeah. he was meant, you know, to play in Philadelphia with the way, you know, he carries himself and who he is as a person and the man that he is um, and the warrior that he is on the field. You never know what he's going to say, honestly. Like, none of those guys. You have no clue what is going to happen, what they're going to say, what they're going to do. Um, and obviously you're, obviously, you're like, shoot, I'm glad. I think maybe Selleck had to go after him. And I was like, dude, I'm so glad I'm not Selleck right now. I have to speak after this dude. You know, I can tell you that right now. <laughs> What do you say? You know, Lane can't stay off the juice. I'm like, <laughs> whoa. Yeah, Mike Lombardi got killed. I mean, yeah. he did. A, he, there, there was a lot going on there, man. A lot, yeah, yeah. for sure. Harry Roseman down the hall in the closet. Oh, yeah. yeah, exactly. <laughs> Trey, I got to ask you about Nick Foles because you know, I, I, first off, what was it like just either being in the game or watching from the sideline, watching him deal that night? I, I mean, he was on fire and. How do you explain the career? When he's an eagle, he's unbelievable. When it's anywhere else, it's a totally different story. I mean, how do you explain that? Yeah, I can't explain that part. I know, like, this being Foles in general, he's so even-keeled and so, like, chill. And I remember um, 
not necessarily like the game. Obviously, he balled out and, you know, played one of the best Super Bowl performances there is. But, like, the weeks leading up to that, there was, you know, Carson goes down, probably going to win NFL MVP. You know, I, I think that's a unanimous deal. Um, and then Foles comes in, and the first two or three games, not very good. You know, we win. Or we're, we're, I think we win two, yeah. two of the three or whatever, but maybe, maybe we win all three. But, like, there's still a lot of doubt, you know, with him, with people outside the organization, with him. Shoot, even few, some people inside the organization. I remember him and I talking. Mm-hmm. He's like, dude, I – they just I haven't got a chance yet. Like I, I'm, I'm going to do, we're going to do this, you know, like I'm not worried, like I'm not concerned by any means. I'm not freaking out, but I just need like people behind me and like, mm-hmm. let's do this. You know, I, I believe in myself. I believe we got the team, blah, 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 that type of stuff. And like just seeing him overcome all the bull crap that comes with being a quarterback, you know, in Philadelphia and really for any NFL team um, and just, you know, every week get better and progress and get more comfortable and then shoot, he starts wheeling and dealing. And then he, I, I remember the, the uh the flea flicker to Tory Foles in the Minnesota game, like gosh, bro, like that throw was just dumb. And then from then on out, like I felt like every throw he made was just ridiculous, you know. Like how did he do that? Um, and he has it in him, you know. And I've seen him do it countless times, you know, elsewhere. But uh, I mean, I think the deal in Jacksonville was just a bad deal, you know. It's just not a good fit, not comfortable. It, it just Jacksonville in general is not a, not very good, you know, from a from top down. And so I think we can all agree on that over the last couple of years. And then uh, he went to Chicago and. Um, just bad situation from a quarterback standpoint of 15 guys in the quarterback room. And you, know, you play, <laughs> right. you play, uh, you know, merry-go-round every single week and it's just nothing, no, nothing stable, you know, no consistency. Um, so wishy-washy, you know, um, and you got guys fighting for their lives, you know, as, as coaches and GMs. And so it's never a good situation, you know, in that, in that scenario. So we'll, I'm interested to see um, how he does with Frank, you know, um, in Indy and um, playing the backup role and, and we'll see where, you know, what happens from there. Hey, Trey, you, you were talking about um, how you still view those guys from that 2017 team as, as close friends. Who are some of the guys you stay in closest contact with? I would say probably the most contact I have uh, would be Marigos, um, mm-hmm. Jordan Hicks, uh, Ertz, Carson. Um, those are probably the, the four um, guys I probably stay the mo- most in mm. contact with. Mm. Wow. Well, you know, you guys took next man up to a different level, man. Of, of You know, I mean, how did you guys prepare and, and, and just be able to, you know, one man goes down, next man up? I mean, I've been in situations where, you know, next man up, you know, yeah. But usually when next man up comes, you put, yeah. it's the reason why you're the next man up because you no shouldn't question. be yeah. there. But you, I mean, yeah. it seemed like all you guys were meant to be there and they were good, you know. A backup is a backup mm-hmm. because he's a backup. But it seemed like mm-hmm. your backups was just as good as your starters, man. Mm-hmm. How did that whole mentality come through, man? Yeah, I think, you know, how he got really fortunate with bringing in some younger guys that could play, you know, might not have been able to start, you know, but could play at a really, really high level if uh, they needed to. And that's not always the case. You know, a lot of times um, you got younger guys that are there because they were drafted, you know, not necessarily because they're good and, um, it happens a lot, unfortunately, all over the league, not just, you know, in not just in a certain area. And so I think we had a lot of guys that, uh, you know, quite honestly, were dogs that were backups, you know, that gave mm-hmm. the first team defense a run for their money every every single week, you know, when we're preparing for that team. Same with the defense, you know, giving the first team offense, the scout team defense, giving the first team offense a, a really good run for their money. Um, and guys that were like really – they were we were more into like developing ourselves and, and instead of like trying to start you know, right away. Like we knew our time was eventually going to come. Um, and uh, when the time did come, you know, we, we played well because we were working on developing ourselves instead of worrying about the situation or the scenario that we're in. And so, um, but also like the guys that got hurt, um, they were such good dudes. You know, I think of like Jason Peters, like uh, I think of Jordan Hicks, Chris Mary goes like those guys didn't just take off and go to Cabo, you know, and go on a vacation. Like, no, they were in the facility every single day, um, watching film with us, breaking it down with us, helping us out you know, teaching the guy next, the next man up, like, yo, this is what I'm seeing. Um, this is the keys that I'm looking at. Like, boom, this is what you got. And so I think obviously that helps, you know, a young player, no matter, you know, what position you play. Yeah. Um, and so just having those, the leadership, um, the solidified leadership, just from the very beginning, the day one guys, you know, who are going to be leaders and then throughout the year carry us um, all the way home. Um, I think definitely helped as well. Hey, hey Trey, you, you, what do you think about the way Carson's career has turned? I mean, he left, Philadelphia, not in the best of terms. And all of a sudden, after one year, he's gone from Indy. And all the stuff that's said about Carson, I shouldn't say all, but a lot of the stuff that has been said about Carson was more negative than positive in Mm -hmm. terms of his last year in Philadelphia and his only year in Indianapolis. 
Yeah, I, I don't know. I wasn't in the locker room, you know, the last yeah. year uh, or last two years, I think it was um, in Philly. Um, but I know one thing I know is like the stuff that I read and hear in the media mm -hmm. is not the Carson that I know. You know, I know a way different version. So like, I don't know where the where it's getting misconstrued or where yeah. the you know the uh, I don't know what the word to say is for that, but like where the disconnect is um, mm -hmm. from the media and from him. But like, that's not the guy I know. And that's not the guy I talk to whenever, you know, I, I we talk on the phone or we shoot texts to each other. So um, obviously I hope he does really well in Washington and um, coach Rivera is an unbelievable coach. And I think he'll enjoy his time over there. Trey, do you still keep up with the present day Eagles? It wasn't been, you know, clearly not that long since you've been gone, but what's your sense of, of where they're headed for, for 2022? Man, I love the Sirianni hire. Like absolutely love it. I was, uh, I was a little worried um, and maybe worry is not the word, um, but concerned because uh, Nick at sometimes can be a hothead. And maybe that was just because he was the offensive coordinator in Indy when I was there and mm. he didn't have to be the, the guy, you know, because um, obviously, you know, there's different roles there. But, uh, I mean, X's and O's and then personality type, shoot, you couldn't find a better guy to fit um, in Philly. And, and me knowing the fans and how tough it is in Philly and all the crap that you have to deal with, like, I didn't know if that was going to be the best fit for him, you know, off, off rip. But I knew he was going to be an unbelievable head coach to start out with, just, just me being 100% honest. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I mean, some of the guys he brought with him, uh, rock stars, like the coach, coaching-wise. And um, I think he's going to do a phenomenal job. And we'll see, you know, what happens. Um, at the beginning of the year, and it, it should be a fun year. Hey, when I texted you on Monday about coming on our show, you said, "Hey, man, I'm sorry I missed your text. I was out fishing. I'm, uh, you a big, you a big time fisherman? Yeah, I fish a lot. I was fishing a tournament, so I uh, that's why I, I was out, I was out, and I didn't have my uh, the cell connection, so I couldn't. Whoa, 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 what whoa, kind whoa, of fish? Because you're talking to, you're talking to two professional fishermen here. What kind yeah. of fishing you do? Oh, nice, man. So we did, uh, so we do like all the local tournaments on the West coast of Florida. Uh, for the most okay. part, we just, we came in first place, uh, this weekend, we got, uh, two blue Marlin. Um, we got a couple Ooh. grouper, a couple, Ooh. uh, what a couple mahi, a couple tuna, but you weigh in like your six best fish and like the most points you can get for a fish is a hundred points. So like oh! the bill, bill fish is a hundred points. So we got 200 points were there and we got two, you know, 20 plus, 20, 20 plus pound tuna and a couple, you know, 20 to 30 pound grouper. Uh, what, size good boat day. Good time. what? Say again. What size boat do you have? I got a uh, 37 Invincible. It's a catamaran. Wow. 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 What's, what's the biggest marlin you ever caught? Uh, shoot, it was the other day. Probably, I, we think it was like above 300, maybe what? in the 350 range. But uh, yeah, I got, I'll send you a video of it. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, send but, me the I gotta, but, gotta show but the this. The thing is, the Ooh. thing is, you don't you don't catch blue. Mar I mean, you can in the Gulf, you know, but you really catch them in like Central America. Like that's really mm -hmm. like the hot spot for. I mean, you can go catch yeah, fifty yeah. blue marlin in one day in Central Mexico, America. Mexico, yeah, like, yeah, like yeah, all those uh, uh, Costa Rica, Guatemala, like all those Panama. Like you're guaranteed to catch blue marlin, and a lot of time it's in the Pacific. So like for us to catch back to back blues, I mean, people will go a lifetime and never catch a blue marlin in the Gulf. Wait, um, man, so it was cool. Next time, was next time you come up, come on out to me. Come on, Marie. I got a uh, I got a thirty eight foot uh, Silverton. You know what I'm saying? Sport oh, cool. fishing. So, cool, cool, yeah, cool. come on out with me. We go uh, we go out tuna. Um, get a, you know, get him my boy. He's got a well, find a Danny. He's got um, go out and, and he's got a cobble, a, a thirty five foot yeah. cobble. Those are nice, Beautiful man. boat too, man. Good they stuff. uh, I want to I want to get on those yellowfin, man. I never they don't really come around here. We got to go far. Y'all y'all don't gotta go very far. We gotta go. I mean, we were like two hundred and eight miles off the coast. No, two hundred eight miles. I yeah, caught one. Too nice. I caught one. I was we were thirty, we were thirty miles out, just thirty miles yeah. out. We anywhere from great. thirty or going out seventy to eighty. You get, I mean, you get like the the trophy, you know, when you yeah, go out yeah. seventy to eighty in the canyons, you know. So we yeah, out in the canyons yeah, sure. because, of, but we only went thirty miles out, and I got me a nice little sixty. I can't 50. go. I can't go two hundred miles offshore. No, Dad. Good luck I with that, do, with Derek. I can't do it. I can't <laughs> hey man, do it. we appreciate it, man. Yeah, Trey, so great, much, bro. great but, stuff, man. I love catching thank up you, with bro. you, man, appreciate and it. wish you all the best with, with whatever you decide to do, man. Congratulations, Thanks, man. Much love to you guys. Thanks all for right, having me, bro. Appreciate it, bro. Got it. Thanks. That was Trey Burton. That was fun, guys. That was a lot of fun.